Hello, everybody, and welcome to finding your pelvic floor, your zip up activation, and learning how to utilize your ab ribbon in conjunction with those foundational elements. First and foremost, we are going to figure out how to size and also place your ab ribbon on your body. So I'm going to take it off. Now here, I like to find my natural waistline, which is usually an inch or two above the belly button. And the reason for this is that the middle transversus abdominis fibers cross that area. So you'll have a big, very effective amount of proprioception, or I use this term a lot, or feedback, tactile feedback, as to where the core is in space. Okay, when you pull the navel into the spine and also when you exhale and decrease the circumference of your waist so that you can loosen the ribbon when I say exhale, and that is part of the zip up activation. So let's find that natural waistline. And um, some of you may have a, a challenging time finding it, so so just think an inch or two above the above the belly button. Um, I work with a lot of postnatal clients who you know wear the the ab ribbon, um, and they are going to just just take that you know take that measuring tape and find an inch or two above the belly button, and that will be that place where they can use the proprioception of the ab ribbon. So so here we go. I'm about. For me, about, about two inches, about two inches much above my waist, that's going to help it so that the ab ribbon, when upon exhalation, it sits in that groove of the natural waistline and it doesn't move around too much. So you basically want to size it so that it feels tight when you're disengaged, right? And I um, here, I can show you full disengagement. I'm not pushing out, but I'm very, very released. Take a big inhale. You should feel tension on the inhale. And then upon maximum exhale, after we go through our eight second exhale, which I will teach you in the breathography fundamentals video following this one, you will feel a lot of looseness with, um, between your skin, the skin of your abdomen and the ribbon. Okay. And this is something we will go deeper into in the next foundational video. Okay. So let's start there. Okay. And Next, now that we have the ribbon placed, we're going to go into what is your pelvic floor? Why do we use the pelvic floor in this workout? Regardless of whether you are pre postnatal or just general population or athlete or, you know, or old or young, all of us need to work on our pelvic floor. Why do I always start our zip up activation with the pelvic floor? Well, mainly because the pelvic floor has the ability to stabilize our spine, prevent injuries, and give us a greater activation in our lower transversus abdominis fibers. And that transversus abdominis is the muscle, is that corset muscle that wraps around all the way to the low back that allows us to feel looseness on the ab ribbon when in conjunction with our core movements and our functional fitness, which really helps to stabilize in our lumbar spine. And that is so incredibly important to find that stability in the low back. Why? Because the low back doesn't love too much excessive movement in this direction or in this direction while we are working out, while we're under load. Now, does our spine move in, in those directions naturally for a reason because it should? And the answer is yes. When we are, aren't putting our, our spine under great duress or high resistance patterns, it is absolutely perfectly fine and you should move the spine in all directions. That is healthy and that is normal. But what we are working on here is developing a bracing strategy, a stabilization strategy, so that when you are working out, when you're doing core movements, when you're doing those squats, when you're adding those dumbbells and those heavier resistance bands and the body weight exercises, you have a strategy to better find your neutral spine during these, um, during these exercises. So let's touch on neutral spine just very quickly. Um, we'll talk about that more in another video, but in general, this is a rule of thumb and please message me, AJ Correctology on in Instagram to speak more to neutral spine, your individual neutral spine, because it is very individual. It's a little different for everyone. In general, if you make a triangle with your index fingers and your thumbs and you put it on your pelvis, all the way tucked, your fingers will be forward of your of, of your thumbs, right? Or the heels of your hands, to arched, and then the fingers go 
go behind the thumbs or the heels of the hands. In general, if you're just about flush with that triangle, top of hand and, and, and fingertips, you are approximating neutral. Now, there's a couple other things you can think about in neutral. Are you feeling those low abdominals pull up without over tucking, without sinking, where you may feel a lot of hamstring, inner thigh engagement because those muscles are working too hard to push you into a posterior tilt, right? Too arched, you're probably gonna feel your low back and your hip flexors a little bit too much. You know, that neutral spine is so important because that is the place where our muscles that connect into our pelvis work at the greatest, pl the place of greatest mechanical advantage. That is the place where the muscles are all working at the length that they're happiest at. You know, the scientific term is the length tension relationship. And we emphasize neutral because all those muscles are happiest and can produce the greatest power and have the greatest mechanical advantage when our pelvis is in neutral, okay? And in that neutral spine, when our muscles are able to absorb the highest level of forces or the highest level of shock, when we are putting our, our bodies under greater stress through exercise, good stress, you stress, you want it to be a good stress so that you positively adapt over time. Now it can turn into a negative stretch stress if our body is not aligned in an optimal position. And then our, our passive tissues such as um, intervertebral discs and ligament structures and all the structures that are not active tissue, which is our muscle, that's where we want the forces to be absorbed. If we're not in neutral, there's a chance that we could be putting too much stress on the, you know, on, on the passive tissues of the lumbar spine. And that is really, I would say one of the main reasons that we want to focus on neutral here. So I'm glad that we touched on neutral because we're going to use and emphasize and reinforce that neutral with our pelvic floor activation and with our zip up activation. So next, let's talk pelvic floor. That is number one of our zip up activation. Okay. Number one of the zip up activation it looks and sounds like a zipper because we're starting from the bottom, we're contracting our pelvic floor, then we're pulling our navel in, then we're closing our ribs back, those are the upper transversus fibers, then we're gently opening our shoulders, then we're gently pushing our head back. So see, it looks like a zipper. On the one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm not pulling my shoulder blades together, I'm not shoving my head back, I'm just gently having a moment of deliberate reset of the ribs, the shoulders, the head, so that we're setting ourselves up to have optimal form and optimal length tension relationships so that our body is working at greatest mechanical advantage, not only our pelvis, but also our rib cage and our shoulders and our head in every single movement that we perform, okay? And this is why I say one, two, three, four, five. That is our zipper from the bottom to the top at the beginning of every single set of exercise. So there's no exercise that we ever perform in this method where I don't cue you with one, two, three, four, five. Now, it happens quickly in the workouts so that we don't spend, you know, 50, 60% of our workout zipping up because we do want to get to our functional exercise once we've set up. Therefore, I'm going to break it down right now very slowly so that we can have a lot of practice with it before you integrate it into your, your other workouts where it does happen on two beats, the rhythm one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And that happens again at the beginning of every single side of exercise. So now let's break down our pelvic floor engagement. Okay. That is count one of our zip up activation. Again, the pelvic floor is so incredibly important to find so that we can have greater stabilization in our low back and a greater activation of our lower abdominals. Not to mention gravity is constantly working down against the pelvic floor. And so the pelvic floor weakens over time simply because of the weight of gravity. And that is why, you know, older individuals can have pelvic floor dysfunction or incontinence or all the things that come along with, um, you know, the gravity, gra unfortunately, gravity just weighing down on us. Now, if, um, if you are someone who has dealt with um, weight gain or, um, you know, has had a baby or two or three, then you know how important it is to really focus on the pelvic floor because of that extra weight that's been pushing down on the pelvic floor. And so within this workout, we focus a lot on isometric contraction of the pelvic floor and the lift of the pelvic floor. Now, there are certain moments in the workout where we perform a mobility breath or a released breath where I do include release of the pelvic floor because it is just as important to be able to release the pelvic floor as it is to contract the pelvic floor. For those of you who have had pelvic 
pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, sometimes there can be spasming in the pelvic floor and you're hyperactivated. Now I do find that getting a great deliberate contraction of the pelvic floor and bringing blood flow to the pelvic floor can be one of the most successful methods of getting it to release, you know, strengthen it, work it because sometimes it's spasming because you have so much weight pushing down on it. But I want you to be able to feel the difference between a release and an engage. Now we do focus mostly on an engaged pelvic floor within this workout. Why? Because that contraction of the pelvic floor, that is usually the position of the pelvic floor that people have less practice with. And because we're working on integrating and learning a bracing strategy to help reduce the, the, uh, the um, stress and potential damage on the spine, we're going to use that pelvic floor contraction and lift and pull together to get a better pelvic floor contraction, which means better transversus abdominis contraction, which means a looser ribbon, which means better stabilization of the spine. Okay. So let's break down all the components of the pelvic floor. Okay, now the zip up activation, one, two, three, four, five, pretty quick. What is number one? Number one is the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor is a combination of many, many muscles. There are muscles that pull the pelvic floor together like this. That's the sit bones pulling together, pulling together, pulling together. Then there's the pubic bone and the tailbone pulling together in this direction, okay? And if you look at a diagram of the anatomy of the pelvic floor, you'll see all of these muscles that work in various directions, some on an oblique angle, but generally I find that if I cue first pull the sit bones together, then pull this direction. So that's your sphincter pulling into your pubic bone, or you can even think tailbone pulling in this direction. Now make sure when you pull in this direction on count two, that you don't clench your butt muscles. Not that it's a, not that we cannot squeeze our glutes in tandem with the pelvic floor contraction, but you want to make sure that you can isolate the pelvic floor before you add the glute engagement into it. Okay. So count one, we're pulling the sit bones together. Count two, we're pulling the tailbone into the pubic bone. Okay. So one, two, now count three is pulling all of those fibers up. Imagine you're pulling them up a couple of inches up toward your belly button. And you're pulling all those muscles that you pulled in this way on one, this way on two. And then on count three, you're pulling all of them up, all of them up. And immediately you feel more low abdominal fibers. Now, if you have a hard time sensing that, you can imagine on count one, you're pulling the sit bones together. On count two, you're simultaneously stopping your, your stream of pee, right? So it's that urethra closing, stopping, and you're also stopping your poo, right? So let's, let's really get into it here. That is, what, that is what we're talking about. We're using a combination of the don't pee and the don't poo muscles to get a holistic pelvic floor contraction. Okay. Now there was a study that actually one of the, um, one of the recent boot camp members sent to me and it showed, they actually looked with EMGs. They were, you know, measuring the level of pelvic floor contraction. And what they found was that the cue of pulling a marble up through the anus actually was the most successful cue, um, for cueing the pelvic floor. And so that just shows you that you can stop your pee, but then pull the marble up and then you get more pelvic floor contraction and more lower abdominal contraction. So it's really a combination of a lot of, a lot of planes of motion, a lot of directions um, of muscle fibers contracting simultaneously. Okay. Now on count three, that feeling of lift, you can think if you're a female, you can think you're pulling, um, you're pulling a tampon up, 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 up into like toward that cervix, so you're squeezing and you're lifting. Okay. That's count three, totally different sensation than count one and count too. Okay. Um, if you're a male, you can think contraction of the testicles, you're pulling those up and you're lifting the skin right of the testicles and you can actually see and feel that movement. Okay. So that's count three for females and males. Okay. So let's practice one. And I have the metronome going because we always do our workouts at a rate of 60 beats per minute. That's 60 seconds per minute. So we're staying on the beat on the second. And eventually that's going to keep our breath pattern at a rate of a maximum rate of six breaths per minute. Okay. Which research does support that that is the, the optimal rate of breathing to support our our, our autonomic nervous system and the relationship between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. So we're working on a lot of concepts here all at once. <laughs> I've been developing this for years. So there's, there's a lot of components to this. So let's start from 
number one, number two, number three of the pelvic floor. Here we go. Pull together, pull together, three. Okay, let's release again. We start with the sit bones this way, and I'm gonna use my hands to demonstrate what's happening with the pelvic floor. Here we go. One, two, three. Take it again, release, and one, two, up on three. Release, again. Pull together, together, lift. Okay, there's our three counts. Now let's move to the next section of the zip up activation, and that is closing the ribs back. Those are those upper transverses, middle and upper transverses abdominis fibers. This is really where you feel the ribbon loosening around the waist. And if you don't feel it loosening, that means that we need to strengthen that connection to your transversus abdominals because you could be over utilizing your superficial without that deep corset working in conjunction. Okay, so that's count three is closing the ribs, almost like you're closing the ribs back against the wall behind you. Make sure when you do that, you don't over close them and move to a, 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 um, a hyper kyphotic position, which is too rounded in the upper back. But many of us have too much, um, don't have enough round in the upper back, right? So here you want to push the ribs back into a nice natural curve because remember the upper spine has a neutral place just like the lower spine has a neutral place we don't want to be over tucked here but we don't want to be over rigid here okay so that's count um that is the next count of the zip up activation we're wrapping the ribs around we're closing them and that happens this whole zip up activation happens on a hiss exhalation. And that hiss exhalation is going to help us activate those deep transverses and pelvic floor fibers that are gonna help us loosen the ribbon as we perform our zip up activation, okay? So there's ribs pulling back. The last two counts of the zip up activation are simply shoulders, head. Now notice, when I say shoulders and head, I'm not shoving my shoulders back, I'm not shoving my head back, but I'm gently just opening my shoulders, almost like I'm zipping, I'm pulling, my collarbone is smiling, right? So I'm pulling out through the shoulders, I'm lengthening my pecs, always imagining that you're lengthening your pecs as you zip up, activate, and as you do any upper body exercise, okay? So we're opening the pecs, and then we're gently pressing our head back, but also lifting it up at the same direction, um, at the same time so that if we're doing a combination of pressing the head back and pushing it up, really what we're doing is we're pushing it at a 45 degree angle up at the line of the jaw, up at the line of the ears, right? And it's gentle because if we push back too hard and we hold it here, well, then we're going to spasm them in our necks. We're, we're going too far. There are certain exercises where I will have you hyper flex and those deep flexors just as an exercise because many of us do have forward head posture. So we need to work to correct that. But remember, shoulders open and then a gentle lift of the head back. Those are the final two counts of the zip up activation. So because we're breaking the pelvic floor down into three parts right now, and eventually those three will become one for the one, two, three, four, five, let's take a seven count, seven separate counts on the beat of the metronome to practice our pelvic floor and our zip up activation. So it looks like this, one, two, zip up, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I forgot to mention the first time around that we actually do have a separate beat for pulling the navel into the spine. Now that happens after the pelvic floor, the, the pelvic floor contraction. So really count one is pelvic floor, count two is navel, count three is ribs, count four is shoulders, count five is head. Now, because we're breaking down the pelvic floor engagement into three separate parts, count four to, for, the, for the first exercise will be navel pulling back. So we go pelvic floor this way, pelvic floor this way, pelvic floor this way, then navel, then ribs, then shoulders, then head 45 degrees, okay? So that will make a seven count for our first stab at this. Now, remember, the um, the navel pulling in, it's not this. It's not sucking the navel in and flaring the ribs. Now that technically is a transversus abdominis engagement and fine if you need to go to that extreme to find the, that musculature, that's okay. That's a tummy vacuum really sucking in. But ideally on the zip up activation, we wanna have a more holistic transversus abdominis contraction when I say navel. I simply say navel because it's just um, easier to visualize and easier to cue for the you know for the count three of the zip up activation. But know that when I say navel, I actually mean the entire circumference of the ab ribbon because that's about where the ab ribbon is, 
pulling away from the ab ribbon because that transversus abdominis, it connects into low back fibers called the thoracolumbar fascia. And so if we get a holistic transversus abdominis contraction, it's not just the belly button pulling in, it's actually reducing the circumference of the waist all the way around. And that's where the ab ribbon really gives you a nice amount of feedback because you are able to feel the skin pulling away from the ribbon. 360 degrees okay so but again because we're starting with a seven count broken down zip up activation we're going to take those three separate counts for the pelvic floor the fourth count will be navel right that whole circle um count five will be ribs count six is shoulders count seven is head so let's just practice it um we will take this on a hiss exhalation but at first let's just practice the beats to really get that good practice here we go pelvic floor together Together, lift up on three, belly button four, ribs five, shoulder six, head on seven. Okay, let's take it again a couple more times like that. Here we go. Pelvic floor one, two, three, four, five, six, and a seven. That's it. Let's try it on our hiss exhalation. Let's practice it a few times here. Now I'll face the front so you can see what's going on. Here we go. Hiss once, two, three, fours, fives, six, sevens. Now, of course, your hiss is one continuous exhale because I'm cueing you. I'm just staggering. I'm, you know, it sounds staccato, but it's So see how that pressured breath, that exhale is really to help, helping me to increase the activation of those deep abdominals that I want to be activated on the zip up activation to set us up for, you know, optimal optimization of the, you know, of every, every single exercise that we do. We're setting our posture up, right? Reducing the chance of trigger points in the muscles because everything is working at a proper length tension relationship. Okay. So let's take the seven count again on a hiss. Here we go. Hiss one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take it again. Here we go. Pelvic floor one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. Take it again. Here we go. Pelvic floor once, two, three, navel force, ribs five, shoulder six, and seven. Take it again. Here we go. Hiss once, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And take it again. One more time on the seven count. Hiss once, two, up three, navel four, ribs five, and seven. Okay, so now let's take that against the wall. I love using the wall for this um, for the zip up activation because it gives us that feedback that our ribs are pressing back. We're not over tucking in our low back because you certainly don't want to press your low back into the wall. That could be a signal to you that you're over um, tucking the pelvis. Um, and of course, our connection um, between the wall and our low back and our sacrum will depend on, you know, the size of the gluteus, right? And so, you know, if you do have more mass there, you know, it's going to push you away from the wall and you'll have less connection um, with the sacrum. So don't worry so much about that. I would say just try to stay away from totally flattening the low back against the wall and do try to instead press the, the bottom ribs back against the wall. That's really going to help you find those middle transversus abdominis fibers and find your neutral in your upper back, right? Now, on, on the last counts where I say shoulders and head, if your shoulders can meet the wall without your ribs coming off the wall, that's fine for you. Um, but otherwise, just think gentle lift of the shoulders if they don't touch the wall that's okay. Just really use it as a reminder to open the shoulders and lift the shoulders, lift the collarbone. And then on the last count, if you can press the head back when you lift it at that 45 degree angle, that's great. But if, you know, you have structural limitations or there's pain, um, you certainly, you know, if your head is so forward, you don't want to push it back and then make compensations because you do have that structural limitation to start you'll eventually improve that. And you may want to start with just a towel behind your head so that you do have some feedback that you are pressing your head gently back and lifting the head back. Okay. So here we go. Let's take the seven count driving back against the wall on a hiss. Here we go. Hiss once, two, up three, navel four, ribs five, shoulders six, head on seven. Release. Let's take it one more time back against the wall. Hiss once, 
two, lift three, navel four, ribs five, shoulders six, and head seven, and release. Now that you have that sensation of pressing the posture back against the wall, let's just take it in a, in a, in a, um, a sumo squat, basically. This is a great place to feel it because we do this a lot in the workout. Okay, let's put your hands behind your head because that position is really also gonna help you feel that posture. So let's take the seven count in this position. Here we go, hiss, pelvic floor, two, lift three, navel four, ribs five, shoulders six, head on seven. Everything releases, hiss, exhalation, hiss, once, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's take it one more time, seven count, here we go. Hiss, once, two, lift on three, navel four, ribs on five, shoulders six, head on seven, and release. That's our seven count. That is our seven count broken down zip up activation. Now, you know, we're heading to a place where I go one, two, three, four, five. Well, how do we get there? Well, now we're going to break it down to a six count. So on this next round, this next set of zip up and pelvic floor practice, you are going to combine this and this. So I might cue you in the workout, all four corners of the pelvic floor pulling together, all four corners of the pelvic floor pulling together. So that is sit bones here. So it's all of these on this plane parallel to the, to the floor pulling together at the same time. So that's one. Count two is now going to pull up. There's that lift. There's that testicle lift. There's that, you know, that, that P is lifting up. The tampon is pulling up. That's count two. Count three is now the navel. Count four is the ribs. Count five is the shoulders. And then count six is the head. So now let's move to our six count. Okay, let's press ourselves back against the wall and let's practice six feet from here on a hiss exhalation. One, lift two, navel three, ribs four, five, and a six. Remember, count one is all four corners of the pelvic floor pulling together. So you know what? I'm gonna use my hand. Count one is this, and then count two is lift. Count three is navel. Count four, ribs, five, six. Let's take that six count again. Here we go. One, two, navel, three, ribs, four, five, and head back six. Everything releases, take it again. One, two, navel, three, four, five, and a six on a hiss. Now let's take it in our sumo squat and let's practice our six count. And I'll use my hand so you can use it as a visual. Here we go. Hiss, one, lift, two, navel, three, ribs, four, shoulders, five, and a six. Take it again and s two, three, four, five, and a six. Everything releases, take it again. Hiss, one, two, three, four, five, and a six. Everything releases, and hiss, one. Lift two, navel three, ribs four, and five, and six, and everything releases. Really, really, really nice work. Now, we are going to go to our five count. I know we're, we're working quickly through this. And if you need to stay at the seven count and the six count and just practice those many, many times over, make sure that you listen to a metronome or some of the neutral music that's set at 60 beats per minute so that you can stay at that appropriate tempo, then you stick with those for a few days and then move to the five count and then the, you know, so on and so forth. So now we are moving to the five count, but we're keeping it at one contraction per beat, right? Where eventually, when we do the zip-up activation, we're actually at two at two seconds or two beats, but we do it at a very fast rhythm. Okay, so now we're moving to the five beats. So press yourselves back against the wall. Now count one is the entirety of the pelvic floor. It's this and this. So I want you to imagine that there's really a hand going like this. It's closing and lifting. It's closing and lifting. It's closing and lifting, okay? And now, again, I move to a point where we work with this speed because we need to be able to find the speed of contraction of the pelvic floor so that you can set yourself up adequately for the exercise and really quickly get there with a the setup so that we can integrate this at the top of every set of exercise. And again, we're not spending half or most of the workout just practicing our pelvic floor contraction. That's what this is for, right? Keep with this until you feel skilled enough that you can move to the quick one, two, three, four, five, and go into the workout, okay? So let's take it a five count. So remember, count one is now this, all four corners of the pelvic floor together and zipping up at the same time, okay? So there's the beginning of the zipper. So it looks like this, one, corners close and one. 
So close and lift, close and lift, close and lift. That's count one, then count two is navel, count three is ribs, count four is shoulders, count five is head. Okay, so let's take that on a hiss exhale. Here we go, hiss one, navel two, ribs three, four, five, and then everything releases. Take it again, and one, navel two, ribs three, four, and a five. Everything releases on a hiss exhalation. Here we go. Hiss one, navel two, ribs three, shoulders, and five. Now let's take it in our sumo squat. All right, I'll give you a little bit of a profile here so you can see what's going on. Okay, so this is count one, and then navel back on count two. Remember, close and lift, close and lift. Here we go. Hiss one, navel two, ribs three, shoulders four, head lifts on count five. So you can see I'm lifting the head on a 45 degree angle. I like the hand behind the head because it helps give you feedback as to what the head is doing in space. Here we go. Hiss one, two, three, four, five. Everything releases. Take it one more time. Hiss, close and lift, navel, ribs, shoulders, and a head. Everything releases, okay. Now, if you are ready, and again, stop the video here if you're not ready to speed it up because now we've arrived at the moment where we are going to perform the zip up activation. One, two, three, four, five. And you will hear me say it in that same rhythm, that same intonation many, many, many times throughout the workout. We're always gonna start and you will know that you're heading into another set of exercise because you'll hear me say one, two, three, four, five. Well, those one, two, three, four, five counts are the same five beats that you just practiced, but sped up. So press yourself back against the wall. Count one, one, two, three, four, five. Let's take it up tempo. One, two, three, four, five. Release, take it again. Pelvic floor, navel, rib, shoulder, head. <laughs> I know, it's a tongue twister. I've said it a million times though, so I'll cue you through with the body parts so you can hear that a couple times. Here we go, hiss. One, two, three, four, five. It's a zipper. One, two, three, four, five, right? So you really wanna feel that lift. Pelvic floor is continuing to lift up into the abdominal fibers, especially the transverse. And you wanna feel that looseness of the ribbon by the end of the hiss exhalation. Here we go. And let's start. Hiss, one, two, three, four, five. Take it again, release. Pelvic floor, navel, ribs, shoulders, head. And everything releases. Hiss, pelvic floor, navel, ribs, shoulders, head. Everything releases, take it again. One, two, three, four, five. And release, now let's take it in the sumo. All right, and I'll keep my hand here so you can use this as a visual. One, two, three, four, five. Count three is always ribs. So now we move to the place where count three, that middle count is the middle of the zipper, right? Middle transverse abdominus fibers, that's count three. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's take it again, now I'll say the body parts. Here we go. Pelvic floor, navel, ribs, shoulder, head. Everything releases, take it again on a hiss. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Everything releases, one more time. Here we go, and one, two, three, four, five. And everything releases. Now, for those of you who may have a challenging time feeling the pelvic floor or the transverse abdominis, you may want to move into a supine position on your back, like a dead bug position, or better yet, a quadruped position. Why is a quadruped great for finding the transverse abdominals? Well, the transverse abdominus is working now then in a different direction against gravity. You know, we're working the transverse abdominus to actually pull the weight of the organs up in this direction. So sometimes you can get better feedback there. So why don't we practice? Let's break it down from, we're gonna do a couple sets of a seven count, a couple sets of a six count, a couple sets of a five count, and then we're gonna speed it up a few times in the quadruped position, okay? So let's get on all fours. Okay, fine, now here, this is too arched too anteriorly tilted, this is too tucked, posteriorly tilted, this is halfway between the two in that neutral spine, like you're balancing a glass of water on the sacrum, and you will really feel those lower abdominals working. Now here, to really recruit the abdominals, I like pulling the hands and knees together, so if the floor were slippery, the hands and knees would come together like that. Um, so you can start there, just, to, I mean, don't, don't overdo it, but just to get a little more ab activation. Let's start from our seven count, where we break it all down, pelvic floor together, this way, this way, pulls up this way, navel, ribs, shoulders and head, okay? So let's start with the, the pelvic floor pulling together in this direction, seven count. Here we go on a hiss. One, two, lift, three, navel, four, ribs, five, shoulders, six, head back on seven. Everything releases on a hiss. Let's take it again. Hiss, one, 
two, lift three, navel four, ribs five, six, and a seven. Everything releases. Let's take the seven count again. Hiss one and two, lift on three, navel four, ribs five, shoulder six, and a seven everything releases. Now let's take it to our six count. So remember, six count combines the four corners of the pelvic floor. Then it lifts on count two, navel is three, ribs four, five, six. Let's take it, here we go, pelvic floor. One, lift, two, navel three, ribs four, five, and a six. Release on a hiss, pelvic floor together. It lifts, navel, ribs, shoulders, and a head and release. You're on two hands. I'm just using this hand to demonstrate. One more six count. Here we go. Hiss. Pelvic floor. It lifts. Navel, ribs, shoulders, and a head. Okay. Now let's take it to our five count. See, it's sometimes a little easier to feel that transverse abdominus in this direction. Five count. Remember the five count. The pelvic floor pulls together and it simultaneously lifts at the same time. That's count one. Count two is the navel. Ribs three. Shoulders four. Head back on five. Here we go. And pelvic floor. Navel. Ribs shoulders and head. Everything releases. Pelvic floor, navel, ribs, shoulders, and a head. Everything releases. Hiss. Pelvic floor, navel, ribs, shoulders, and head. Everything releases. Now let's take it up tempo. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so same, same contractions that you just performed, just that new rhythm. One, two, three, four, five. Here we go on a hiss. One, two, three, four, five. Everything releases on a hiss. Now I'll say the body parts very quickly. Here we go. Hiss. One, two, three, four, five. Now next time I'll say the body parts. <laughs> Here we go. Pelvic floor, navel, ribs, shoulders, head. Everything releases. Let's take it again. Remember that pelvic floor is clench and lift all at the same time. Here we go. Pelvic floor, navel, ribs, shoulders, head. Everything releases. Here we go. And pelvic floor, navel, ribs, shoulders, head and release and finished. Okay, I want you to keep practicing this video until you go to a place where you feel very comfortable with that one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it doesn't need to be perfect, but you at least need to be able to identify each of those components of the one, two, three, four, five zip up activation. That is your pelvic floor, that is your zip up activation, that is your ab ribbon, the relationship between the zip up activation, the pelvic floor and the ab ribbon. And this is one of the absolute fundamentals of this methodology. So you wanna start here. Next, going on to the breathography fundamentals, which will go through that extended eight second exhalation. What is an engaged exhale? What is an, an engaged inhale? What is a released inhale? And why do we perform certain sounds and certain intensities of breath with the breath choreography, which is the breathography, which really helps further and deepen further <laughs> and increase that that activation in the deep abdominals okay so check that out as your next foundation video after you feel comfortable with the zip up activation every exercise begins with the zip up activation so become skilled at this first and you will have absolute success with your breathography technique and with the whole hypoxics methodology thank you so much see you at the next one